Today, responsible for all our marketplaces uh, globally, uh, already for more than four years, uh, also a CEO of uh, what is Africa uh, and Asia. Uh, why is Ringier in Africa? Maybe, uh, Mark, you missed that point. Um, Ringier, um, besides nowadays being a, a digital company and uh, formerly a traditional publisher, etc., etc., 
uh, is also um, kind of an expert in emerging markets. It's at least what we are considering ourselves. We started more than well, almost 30 years ago, so uh, late 80s, early 90s, doing business in Central Eastern Europe as absolute first movers, uh, countries like uh, Czechoslovakia, Romania, Poland, etc. Early 90s, we went to Vietnam, China, but nobody uh, went there. Um, not easy, but uh, we succeeded in those countries. Uh, over three decades, we learned how to do business in early stage markets. We learned what kind of attitude, vision, long-term strategy is needed. Um, also, uh, we learned something about patience. We learned something about uh, political hiccups, not only in Africa, but 20 years uh, before in many, many uh, uh, geographies. So we found, hey, Africa, uh, obviously learning about the, the digital revolution taking place on the continent as well, we thought, hey, Africa, with our DNA, with us not necessarily being a financial investor, but being operators, being uh, startups ourselves, being uh, interested in operating in the long term, Africa could be a good place to deploy uh, and start and, and bring also the technologies, the digital know-how that we build and acquired uh, the, the last 10 years. So uh, we started there five, six years ago um, uh, in a very entrepreneurial way. Uh, just building a network, learning about the local markets, um, observing the first two years. Uh, it was with very little investment, very little uh, support from headquarters. It was just being there, looking around, learning how to maybe adapt business models that we know from elsewhere uh, in order uh, uh, to be successful uh, on the local markets and, and in order to match the needs at the end of the day of the uh, African client and consumer. Uh, after two years, we uh, finalized this initial phase and, and started investing more heavily, more seriously, uh, and supporting also from headquarters more seriously those businesses focusing completely on what we can best globally, which is classified, which is digital publishing. At this time also e-commerce, there we have not been so successful honestly, uh, or at least not as successful as with digital publishing and uh, uh, classified, and we started also building uh, digital marketing agencies. So I think Many of you uh, know some of our brands uh, on the continent. Who is from Senegal? So you know maybe uh, Expect Dakar. And um, this is a brand uh, where we did not start it from scratch, but we, we partnered uh, with a local entrepreneur. Um, who is maybe from uh, Ghana or uh, Nigeria knows uh, Pulse, yeah. uh, our media brand that, yes, we started from scratch. Um, and then uh, uh, many other brands that uh, uh, via one or the other way came into our portfolio, Chopperman, Bright to Monday, uh, Checky, the car classified, and so far and so on. Nowadays, five years after uh, the initial start, we have about 750 people in Africa, uh, 10, 11 countries. Um, we can say uh, Africa for Rainier, for this company here, is absolutely one of the main strategic um, and core growth initiatives that we have. And um, it has been quite a journey uh, and uh, a lot of learnings made. What is very interesting is that nowadays, and I think Mark, you, you said this last time being in Nigeria a couple of months ago, uh, at the very beginning, still people from here, from headquarters, not the people uh, responsible for Africa, but many uh, others, they thought, okay, we go to Africa and we teach. And this has changed, but dramatically. What we do, for example, with Pulse is, is kind of ahead of the curve globally. And nowadays, Mark and others from the group executive board, they come to Africa to learn. Uh, and this is exactly what we want. We have most of our uh, countries, of our businesses in, in, in local, under local leadership, local people, great teams. Um, so this is uh, who we are. This is what we are doing in Africa. And very happy to learn more from you, more about your businesses, and maybe also in the future to support, to help, to partner. Um, partnerships are very important. Uh, and particularly in Africa, I think whoever is doing digital business has to partner, has to cooperate, uh, because we have to build an ecosystem there. Uh, neither you nor, nor us, we can uh, do it alone. Uh, but if digital people cooperate, do business together, we can build together uh, the markets, we can educate the markets, and we can um, become better in what we are doing. <coughs> So I won't make it so long, guys, because after it's priority for your time, until five. I uh, just wanted to show you two or three things about digital Switzerland. Um, as Mark said, we have a good economy, but still it changed so quickly. 
we might be in five years not a good economy anymore and have a, a much higher unemployment rate. So I just show you two or three things, better three, and you keep them in mind uh, than too much and you won't. There are statistics, 80% um, of companies, really is best example for that, and all big corporates also in Africa, will increase the digital revenues within three years. By the way, we only use statistics for three years. Because what's behind three years, with the speed of change, no one knows. So we don't speak about 10 years or 20 years, or a generation or whatever, we speak about three. And we're happy if we can know a bit what's going on in three years. So that's the first number. All companies will increase the digital revenue, so 80% of them. In 2020, 100 million people in the world will make e-commerce with augmented reality. Today, it's maybe close to zero. It's a game, you know, it's a toy, but we don't really buy. In three years, 100 million people. So it's a huge new market. And if you're not in there, you're out. And the last one, I'm surprised to be honest about the 50 person because I think it should be 100. It's from Gartner, but half of the companies in the world will transform within three years in the digital company. I think it should be 100 person. The <laughs> one who is not doing that, maybe not. So just some numbers, and it's not about Switzerland, it's about the world. Some of the numbers I really love are the ones here. The first ones, you can see a risk or a chance. 50% of revenues, they will be at risk because of consumers spending modification. You know that best in the last 10 years. If you don't look at print, you go on Facebook, whatever, some other behavior, the spendings are changing. The same with augmented reality. Our e-commerce shop is not changing, not offering augmented reality in three years' time. Might be losing a huge amount of revenue. So that's the first one. And the second one, my best one, my preferred one is, what your kids will do, you don't know yet. <laughs> you don't know yet. And that's the same if you look at our parents. They would have never known you will be color from mobile, or there will be Android, or there will be virtual reality, artificial intelligence. 20 years ago, no chance, huh? That's the same. That's the same. So it goes very, very quick. Now, just about Switzerland, because I guess, guys, when, when, you, when you think about digital and how innovation investors, first, you would love to go to Silicon Valley, maybe China, it's a difficult country, but doing huge stuff for the moment. Then you think about London, then you might think about Berlin, I don't know, maybe Barcelona, there are some others. But you don't think first about Zurich or Switzerland. Huh? So we want to change that. Uh, we are good for, for innovation, that's the Global Entrepreneurship Index. We have some other statistics, we are good for the competitiveness reports. Uh, but still on the startup side, on the hub side and the digitization, we are not there yet. Uh, we don't have an Airbnb, we don't have a Spotify, we don't have an Augur. Uh, we have so many amazing other cases, but we, we are missing these big cases. Huh? Uh, we would like to, to go in that direction, and we would like really to digitize the economy of the country in order to still be a, a good economy. Just to show you one, of, one last statistic, and then two more words about digital Switzerland. We are a very small country, so 8 million inhabitants. So we will never be able to do everything. As Switzerland is now for, well, I don't know, watches, chocolate, cheese, banking, whatever. We have a few things. Industry, and that's the same. In the future, we won't be able to do everything from the new technology world. We might have three to five topics where we might be very good. And that's one good example, a statistic about um, artificial intelligence. As you can see, a statistic about quantity, sorry, about quality, field weighted citation impact, so more about quality of the publications, and here is the quantity. So of course the American, they're clearly number one. Uh, I think Singapore, whatever, uh, UK, very good, so we are we are very small. But on the it seems on the quality of the of the publications we are good. Don't care about number one, number two, but at least we are good. This is there where we might perform as a country, which might be interesting for you, because we also want to have more investors, more good startups, etc. 
just now to show you about Digital Switzerland, what Mark said before, we want to be a leading digital innovation hub to have more <coughs> successful startups, to have more investors, to have very successful corporates, etc., and have a good economy. And how do we do that? I could go quickly because I think the most important one is maybe what do we do? We have five uh, activities in our association. So we are an association. We work with politicians of Switzerland, of course, because we want to improve the political framework of the country. We are working in the area of education. Uh, we want to establish digitization of computational thinking uh, in the primary school. Today, in Switzerland, uh, you don't learn anything about technology up to 20. I have no idea if to go to ETH, EPFL. Uh, in the obligatory school, you don't learn anything. You use computers, of course, but you don't understand how it works. And we would like uh, really to establish this one. Also, in the primary school, just one hour per week would be huge, uh, a huge advancement for the, for the education of the country. And long life learning, for people uh, about 30, 40 years old, they should never stop learning. So that's the two things we are doing. Startup in Netherlands, as I said before, having more startups, more investors. We had last year 900 million invested in startups in Switzerland, so we are country number six in Europe. In the world, I don't know, uh, but at least number six in Europe, beside UK, France, Germany, Israel, and uh, Sweden was number five last year, thanks to Spotify, for a huge amount of money. Uh, this year is my change. So we have an okay ecosystem, we need to be, we are 10, 15 years behind Silicon Valley, clear. And here is one of our leadership, it's more for SMEs, small, medium enterprise and corporates, because uh, a precarious economy is not only startups, it's also about SMEs and corporate, very, very important. The entire economy has to get digitized. So that's here, we are doing some projects. And the last one, last but not least, the population. So, working with politicians, education systems, startups, corporates, SMEs, and here we are addressing the fourth revolution, the digitization to the population. Because it goes so quickly, some people, they are afraid to lose their jobs, some others, they see a huge chance, so we have to talk to the population. We don't want only to move the economy. Also, we address the situation with the population. So, so here we have some projects talking, sensibilizing the, the population, very important. So that's pretty much what we are doing. Uh, we are just situated close to Impactor, where we go, I think, tomorrow or day after. So we are very close from the startup investor economy uh, of the country and corporates, of course. So that's it from my side. Would you like? Thank you. Thank you. Um, Okay, I think this, this has been the best spot so far in this talk, and I'll explain why. Um, I think the startup movement is becoming so somewhat misunderstood by a lot of people uh, in this business as usual. But I think the way you've given your presentation, um, for me, is the reason why we do what we do at CCL. Uh, we think technology is about the future, not just today. And every society, every business needs to find ways to catch up on it. Um, while Africa may not necessarily have a strong base to build technology, there are so many things that we can bring to the table. And, and that's the excitement for what we do. And that's why we're excited about all the entrepreneurs in the room as well. In our opinion, not only are they building businesses to make money, uh, they're building businesses to contribute to the development of Africa, but, but I think also to, to the development of the world. Uh, because as you said, um, innovation is no longer something that is unique to a certain country. You can find uh, exciting spots in, in unlikely places. And so, so without further ado, I'll let these guys speak for, for the continent. As much as we're on this talk, our hope is that we can end up uh, getting a lot of investors and partners excited about their businesses. But also my own Indian agenda, which I say once in a while, is that we can also inspire Europe as to what and where Africa is moving, moving to. So, so thank you so much for hosting us, and uh, I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Great. Thank you.